is about from Narsimha Rao to Narendra Modi. So most of my viewers have bo been born in post-reform era. For a person who does not know about reform, uh, what, how has these reforms impacted, say, a person like me today? It has made it possible uh, for you to have some hope in life uh, and to aspire to rise to the top, to be the best in the world, to become a multi-billionaire, to outdo Mr. Birla, to outdo Mr. Manmohan Singh. There is hope, there is scope. Earlier on, as I said, the best thing was, why don't you leave this country? Yeah, and you said that India was a shortage economy, and from a shortage economy, we've to move, uh, moved toward a relatively more e open economy. Yes. Can you give an anecdote of how the situation was, say, in a pre-liberalization era? I bought a car for 22,000. Mm -hmm. After six, five years, I was able to sell it for 26,000. How? Because there was a huge Cost short shortage. shortage of cars, mm -hmm. but there was a price control on a new car. I see that. So if you were a VIP, if you knew somebody, or if you were a journalist, uh, entitled category, mm -hmm. you got it at 22,000. Okay. And one example I gave was that once when I started to sell the car, the man tried to bargain me down. I said, sir, every day the value of this car is going up. So we have got out of a completely abnormal economy of scarcity. Yes. That you know, at that time, people used to beg me, can you get me a watch mm -hmm. for their daughter? Mm -hmm. Ready. But if I talk about the real fundamental issues that this country faces, one is about the judicial system, the, the, the other might be about the institutions which is in place, especially say the policing out there. So my question is that, fine, we've got the 1991 form, but, but for my generation, when will we get that 1991 moment? I couldn't agree with more with you that the biggest reforms we require today are police judicial reforms, are civil service reforms, <laughs> Uh, institutional reforms. So we have a situation where if the courts are unable to find anybody guilty of anything, mm -hmm. if you're a reasonably resourceful man, I mean if you're a starving, illiterate man, they'll put you in jail and not. So we have a system where therefore there is a huge advantage for every lawbreaker and everybody who obeys the law looks an idiot. Absolutely. Now this particular problem is infiltrating like a cancer into every section of society. Why I say that? Because 1991 was more of an executive action. But in most of these cases, you need a lot of institutions to come together and there are a lot of lobbies which will resist the change. So again, my question is that there are a billion youth aspirations out this in this country. When will our 1991 moment come? How do you see for no, that? You guys coming? have already got it. You, you, yeah. you're so, but for 1991, you wouldn't be where you are. Yeah. So you are not the one who was suffering. New 1991 moment. Having lived from 1942, yeah. yeah. having lived through the 50s and 60s and 70s, you guys are damn lucky. <laughs> no, but you, why you, I say you, that, uh, uh, Mr. Yes, because if you want India to be a superpower, you in the time you do not do these institutional changes. How will you realize the aspiration so, of the so, young So we need all these, but for all those, you require an explosive anger on the part of both. The Aam Admi Party was one example of it. In some ways, Modi himself, to so bringing in cleaner government or good government, the question of bringing in a better quality of government, this is very necessary, for which the people of India will have to get sufficiently angry that the political parties also take it seriously. My last word, if the youth of India is watching you out there, what's the message that you want to give them? The sky is the limit. Give it. Go there. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining on Jankia. Pleasure to have you on this.